Hello and welcome to a new Blender developer sneak peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'd like to present you today the coolest new features in the new Blender release that is coming out in two weeks or so. Um, but first of all, I'd like to congratulate the Blender crowd because she turned 90, uh, she turned one uh, yesterday. And that's really awesome because you guys make that happen that we receive so much improvements and so much new features in Blender lately. So let's dive right into Blender 2.74. There are release candidates out there, so download it. And when you open it, then you will be created by this lovely cat from Manu. And in the background, you already see a very cool feature, a very cool image by Andy that it, he was testing the tornado that is coming out of a washing machine in the gooseberry project and when we um, select the object the tornado object here then you'll see let me just enlarge that a bit that those uh, keyframe markers are drawn at 60 percent height and this 60 percent height is there because when you get many rigid body and that bake, uh, those are baked into keyframes, then you get a row of keyframes like, yeah, like a yellow brick line there, and the um, the key fr the current frame marker wasn't couldn't be seen anymore, and so we decreased the height of those keyframe markers, so you could f at least look at the up upper part of the timeline and see where the uh, current frame marker is standing right now. So that was all. It's not that fancy, but it's maybe important because I know that many of you see that and will report a bug and say, hey, they are not at full height. And so that's it. The second one is a really impressive one and that's uh, the ambient occlusion in the viewport. So let me just turn it off for now and we'll look at the file. Here you, you can see the tornado and if you look closely at this um, top part, then you'll see that it's not much uh, visible how the small wrinkles in there are and uh, how they move when you animate that because you can see it, for example, if you look it like this but it's uh, much harder to see than if we had some shadowing going on here and there and so we get a new option here in the um, properties panel there and that's uh, hidden under display and there uh, under shading and there is the ambient occlusion uh, checkbox and when you enable that then you'll see that it's got shade uh, shaded and shadowing self-shadowing there and you can increase or decrease the strength to make it more visible and the distance uh, as well so you could almost have a drawn look like this and that's um, pretty useful for the motion graphics uh, for motion graphics scenes too because when you get several layers of uh, for example planes that are stacked on top. Let me just show it to you. Several planes that are stacked on top and that are uh, different in size a bit. And you look from the top, then you'll see with, with the ambient occlusion immediately if there are planes that are stacked like this. But if you turn that off, then you'll see that it's almost invisible or indistinguishable if the first or the second or the third plane is uh, just at, at the moment selected. So when you turn on ambient occlusion, then you see how they are stacked. If you turn it off, then you won't see it. So that's a really cool feature and very helpful when you are doing motion graphics too. Let me delete them and go back to our, uh, to our tornado because now we'll have a look at the second feature that is really awesome in the viewport and that is the depth of field in the camera view in the 3D viewport. So just switch to the camera 
to the camera view and um, then enable depth of field here as well it's located under shading and you immediately see that everything is blurred and that's because when you are selecting your camera and go to the depth of field then you see you got yeah, you got a viewport f-stop of 2.0 that's um, if you if you're not sure what that is just read a bit about camera depth of field depth of field and f-stop values in the uh, digital cam in your digital camera or your analog camera and um, this one is the distance that means uh, how uh, that's that's the focal point uh, so to say so when you increase that then you'll see that it's uh, going to be to get sharpened the view but you could do that much easier because when you are in the camera view then you could just hit w and then say depth of field distance pick and if you click on that and click and hold down the left mouse button then you'll see how this is um, how this is changing the distance field on the right side and immediately changing the depth of field effect too so just hit um, just select some distance like this and then uh, increase or decrease the f-stop and you'll see that this part is in focus where everything around that is blurry so that's really helpful if you would like to have some depth in your scene and you'd like to uh, pre-visualize that in your viewport. Apart from the possibility to select the depth of field distance by just hitting W and depth of field distance, you could easily do it by just uh, moving your mouse over this field, this distant field, then hit E and click somewhere and it's exactly behaving the same as before it's entering the uh, distance value at the point that you clicked into this field the same uh, is true for the focus field here just hit e select an object and it gets entered so um, if you uh, set the depth of field a lot then this may be beneficial to you let's now come to the last new feature and that's the adjustable safe areas just enable them by clicking in this checkbox and the safe areas are something that you need when you produce content for TVs because in TVs it's most of the time in, in especially in older TVs it's most of the time like uh, so they overscan the image so they for example if you got this uh, this viewport they would show only this one so all your important informations that are lying outside of a certain area are chopped off. And that's a big problem, especially when you'd like to show ending titles or something like that. And therefore you got some areas where, can be, where you can be safe that all your titles and all your information is actually drawn on screen or shown on screen. And you can adjust them now by just uh, selecting those title safe margins, for example, like this, or those action safe margins, like this. And everything that is inside this um, this area will get shown later on. Uh, we got some presets there that should be uh, that should made it most of the time for every TV. In newer TVs this uh, problem is less um, less important because most of the time they show exactly your uh, exactly what you render out but in older TVs that may be um, really important so you can now adjust them. Let's now switch to the modeling uh, features and uh, look what changed there. Let's start into the modeling section by loading this awesome watch from uh, Manu. I think I think there should be Anthony Anthony's name somehow somewhere. Um, let me just have a look at the texture. Ah, yeah, there. <laughs> That's um, an awesome clock that is uh, for Victor in the in the movie. So. To show you the first feature, let's just switch into edit mode and then select the face. And now hit Shift G, and you see that there is now under the select similar entry 
a flat and smooth entry and that will select everything that is exactly uh, shaded exactly like the one I selected. So if I'm doing like this, then every face is selected that is shaded smooth or flat as well. So let's try that with another thing. For example, this shift G flat smooth and you see everything is selected except this uh, thing that we selected before because those two are different differently shaded one is flat and the other one is smooth So now it's getting hairy We're going to have a look at the new particle features and I'd like to show them to you by loading up a file from Pablo Vasquez with this neat smiley in there and um, this feature here is uh, pretty new. It's uh, for selecting or uh, for showing and, and hiding particle systems without having to click on the modifier panel and then enabling or disabling them there. You could now just e as easy as before with the modifier tab, click in there or click and drag down and everything is enabled or disabled. For the render view, that's uh, this row important and for the viewport it's this row. Blender's hair system got a massive overhaul in the uh, 2.74 release so the next two sneak peeks I think will cover those but let's start with a very simple thing and that is already very useful. I set it up a very simple scene with um, I think 100 um, particles, 100 hair particles and uh, the interpolated type for the children. And now I'd like to have some um, some roughness in, the, in those hairs and as you may see this those hairs are very uniform now and they are very hard to distinguish so let's just use the ambient occlusion feature that I showed you a bit before. So now it's much easier to see and then we'll uh, see what the rottenness factors here is doing. Those are all things that are that were possible in Blender, Blender before but now it's uh, really much more uh, convenient to use if you don't like to have the roughness over the complete strand but only on parts of the strand and therefore you would just enable the use roughness curve like this and then you'll see that both points are at the top and that means it's uh, going from the bottom to the complete top with the same strength but if you'd like to have it uh, low at the at the start of the strand and um, the influence very high at the top then you would it you would do it like this and if you'd like to have uh, a very low intensity at first and then a very high intensity then you would do it like this and you, then you can see that it's almost no roughness there and the roughness starts at the end of the strand like we defined there so the curves are very easy to um, very, are very helpful if you'd like to have a non-uniform roughness that is starting from a specific point in the uh, strand exactly the same thing is going on for the clump noise and the clump curve because the clump curve is doing exactly the same when we are setting the clump clumping clamping to one then you've got some spikes here but if you'd like to have those spikes not starting at the at the bottom and end at there then you would just use the clump curve where you can define exactly like in the roughness curve that you'd like to have the intensity like this or the intensity like this. See, so it's very easy to have uh, very cool forms in your uh, clamping on your roughness with those new curve controls and that makes uh, makes it possible to, to create some very spacey scenes and particle setups. 
Let's now look at another cool feature and that's the spiral kinking option that's located under kink here. And if you select them, uh, select it, then you see that everything is not working at all. And that's because when you uh, like to spiral some hairs, some child hairs, then you have to make it not perpendicular to your uh, to your face here. So just give it a bit of randomness like this and you see that the spiraling is taking action. And if we increase the radius, for example, then you'll see that the spiral radius there is increasing or decreasing. If you enable the random, then you see that not every spiral is the same size and axis does the same for the axis, so not all uh, spirals are aligned. And let me just decrease the number of hair particles so you maybe could see it a bit better. And um, for the shape, it's more or less like the shape on the other panels like this one. So it's um, making it a bit more spirally or in the one di in the one round, in the one direction or in the other direction. And steps is how spiky those, spi those um, spirals are the more steps, the rounder the spiral gets. The axis defines on how axis, on, on which axis the spiral is happening. With the random amount, you um, define that not only on the y axis, but only on, uh, on, but also on other axis, the um, spiraling is happening too. So um, that's a really cool thing if you've got uh, if you got a character with hairs that are spirally and many other things are hidden now in the particle system that I'd like to show you in the next version of the sneak peek but um, I think that this is something you could play with already the next sneak peek will be much more about uh, particles and all the different features that now came in thanks to the Gooseberry uh, project and your support because you were subscribing to the cloud. If you haven't, just do it. It's really awesome. All those features, the ambient occlusion, depth of field, depth of field the, um, the particle improvements, all of, all of those features are coming from, from, the, uh, from your subscription, from your cloud subscription and the immediate work that followed it. Um, but I'd like to show you in this sneak peek, uh, uh, yeah, a sneak peek of all those features. And uh, the first thing I'd like to show you is the uh, colliding hairs feature. So we got now the possibility to enable the hair dynamics here and to uh, enable the collision physics here on this, this collider object. I set a keyframe on frame one and one on keyframe uh, 60. And then all I did, uh, all I do is let it play back. And you see that it's colliding just as we wish. To finish up this Blender sneak peek, I'd like to uh, go to the file browser. So let me just switch to it there, file browser, and then show you this little uh, tiny field there. And this is meant to filter for names. So when we have a tornado string entered here, then only tornadoes are shown here. If you go one up, then this search field is emptied again, because most of the time when you'd like to uh, navigate in the file system, you won't you don't like to filter every time they support the white cards as you can see here and that's the first feature and the second feature and that's a feature that i was waiting for uh, really long is that you got bookmarks now that you can reorder or rename so if you for example and uh, add a bookmark here then you would, for example, not t um, like to have it named slash here. Then you would just name it root, or you would like to have it at the top and not at the bottom. And you could, for example, clean up all your bookmarks and so on. So the bookmark system is now much better. And I think that you will love it once you are used to it. 
This concludes the sneak peek number 19. I hope that you had much joy. My name is Thomas Beck. I wish you a happy planting. Subscribe if you'd like to, and we'll see us next time. Bye.